would you like a state trooper to pull you over for a speeding ticket and because you broke the law, hate you? <laughs> no, you wouldn't. Would you in the restaurant, if you saw the chef angry, working on your meal, would you want that meal? <laughs> you wouldn't want that. If a child does something wrong, would you approach the child with anger and, or violence? No. Probably not. Because you understand these laws. So you use these laws every day. You reap what you sow. Is that not law? Mm -hmm. And it is absolute. Mm -hmm. So, if we want America to move forward, we have to use that same law, correct? Mm -hmm. yes. All right. So, you'll never hear me say anything, one come out of my mouth, about this United States of America going down the tubes. Why? Because the law will manifest what I speak. I'm charging the energy with my words and my feelings. I'm putting a message out there to cause a thing to manifest as I speak it into the air. That's all. How do I pick up this? I have to have a thought, a desire, and here I am. I have a glass in my hand. It has to be. The laws are so simple that we sometimes forget that we're the only authority of these laws. There are some people out there that really do understand them, though. I first learned about the plight of the uh, day of July 4th, 1776, by uh, Napoleon Hill, Thinking for Rich. Anybody know the book? Okay, it's been around a long time. But he seemed to get it. He basically said that these 56 or whatever men, before even getting to the, that debt, had already started a motion of power. And this power, was based on these universal laws that we talked about today. And because of the power that was behind them, they could not fail. How is it that the greatest military power in the world be taken by a handful of colonists, largely in the wilderness? They had very little support from the Continental Congress, almost caused a rebellion, the end of the war, you know about that. But yet they were able to overcome the greatest military force on the face of this planet. And if anybody knows about the Battle of Yorktown, they were trying to pin Cornwallis in, and the storms kept pushing these ships back. <laughs> the storm. We have to understand, we, the people, by the grace of God, all the authority for God's work. And he gave us some rules to go along with that. Natural law. The natural law of your being is harmony. The natural law of your being is harmony. What that means is, I stand here, very naturally. You don't see any jerking, any frantic movements, anything like that, right? Mm -hmm. There's nobody in here going to conductions or anything, right? Body sits very relatively at ease and peace. I would say for most people, yes. Mm -hmm. That is the law of your being, folks. And you feel very uncomfortable when you get angry, don't you? Nobody smiles happily and angry. <laughs> you know, you're not ready to go out and buy the town a drink. <laughs> you know, those are unnatural conditions and behaviors for us. That's how we know when we're obedient to natural laws. We're consistent with the law. When we're happy and joyous, folks. There's a little story about uh, George Washington I want to share. Um, at the end of the war, the, uh, his high-ranking officers were not pleased with the conditions of the war. 
the support they got from the Continental Congress. And they basically decided that they were going to band together with their armies and take over. Most of you, you know, probably know this. And uh, George Washington probably would have been asked to be king or dictator. Yeah. And he found out about it and uh, called the meeting separate from the other meeting. So they went to his meeting. <laughs> and he spoke to his people and pleaded with them to be loyal to virtues and to the country, to not be you know, anti-patriotic after all the fighting that went on. It didn't work. And uh, he had a letter from one of our representatives, Congressman Coat, and he pulls it out. And he begins to, to read this letter. And he's stumbling through it. Well, he pulls it up, puts it back in his pocket, goes to his other pocket to pull out his glasses, put his glasses on. And he said this, gentlemen, you must pardon me. I have grown gray in your service, and now find myself growing blind. This is the statement that totally changed the energy in the room. And it is said that grown, hardened soldiers wept. Why do I share that story? Because if you know anything about George Washington, the greatest military general that we had during those times, he was also one of the most loving and virtuous people we can ever even begin to talk, talk about his uh, president and leader of this country. So was Ben Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, and many, many more. What they were fighting for was truly the freedom of all mankind. They had vision, tremendous vision. And they had that law to back them up. They knew that there was a divine plan for this planet and they, of all the people on the planet, chose to be consistent with that plan, to take the task of fulfilling it God's way.